No, I don't have to. It's partly checking that when Offertory and Communion are played, it Which, does. Anyway, it's as you said, is it? Yes, all that's planned. Um, I'm singing the period, but um, it's just a little bit curious.
don't need to be too close to the to the microphone very sensitive. It's probably here we
morning and welcome to Mass uh, for the second Sunday of Advent, the second Sunday of our Advent journey. Welcome all of you gathered here and those who are with us by the live stream. Welcome indeed. As those who are here can see, for the first time in two and a half years, I think it is, we have no scaffolding in the church and we can, we can breathe again. We had a an amazing turnout yesterday morning of helpers to come and clean, scrub, polish, dust, the whole, the whole thing. So it's, um, I think the effects of their work can be, seen, can be seen all around us. We're going to begin by lighting our second Advent candle and this uh, week Gabriel's going to light that for us. So we pray. Merciful God, you sent John the Baptist to preach repentance. Forgive us for the times we have done wrong, when we have hurt other people and damaged our earth. Bless this candle. May its light lead us to make a change, to live differently, preparing a way and making your path straight. Amen. success. I'm sure it will catch hold. Another change for us is the votive candles to Our Lady are now back again by her statue at the rear of the church. But we've lit candles there for those who've asked for candles to be lit this morning. The Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Kay Viz, whose anniversary occurs. And as we pray for Kay, we pray also for Pat and for their children. Father Pat has now moved into long-term care. He wasn't well enough to be, to be a home. And so we pray especially for him. And as really in this, this time of transition uh, for him. So we ask that God be close to him. Anna asks prayers for her mum and dad, Frank and Margaret Crozier, whose anniversaries occur. And Linda's asked for a candle to be lit in memory of Arthur. And Pat asks prayers for daughter Izzy, who's traveling to Mexico and elsewhere for six months. So we ask that God keep her safe, bring her home safe. And Father Stephen, a priest from the United States, who must have seen us online, has asked for our prayers. And as always, you pray for our parish families, especially those who are struggling, those struggling with COVID, the need to isolate at the moment, for the staff and children at Our Lady Queen of Martyrs and All Saints, and also those who work within the NHS and in our nursing homes and care homes. And for all who, as always this week, have asked for prayers for private intentions, we bring them all, known to God, into our prayer. Candles have been lit for them also. And so gathered as the family of God, gathered as the body of Christ, we open our hearts for God's grace. Lord have mercy. Oh. There you go.
Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain his admittance to his company, he who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your dress of sorrow and distress. Put on the beauty of the glory of God forever. Wrap the cloak of integrity of God around you. Put the diadem of the glory of the eternal on your head. Since God means to show your splendor to every nation under heaven, since the name God gives you will forever be peace through integrity and honor through devotedness. Arise, Jerusalem, stand on the heights and turn your eyes to the east. See your children reassembled from west and east at the command of the Holy One, jubilant that God has remembered them. Though they left you on foot with enemies for an escort, now God brings them back to you like royal princes carried back in glory. For God has decreed the flattening of each high mountain of the everlasting hills, the filling of the valleys to make the ground level so that Israel can walk in safety under the glory of God. And the forests and every fragrant tree will provide shade for Israel at the command of God. For God will guide Israel in joy by the light of his glory with his mercy and integrity for escort. The word of the Lord. for the 
back, they come back full of song, carrying the sheaves. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Every time I pray for all of you, I pray with joy, remembering how you've helped to spread the good news from the day you first heard it right up to the present. I am quite certain that the one who began this good work in you will see that it is finished when the day of Christ Jesus comes. God knows how much I miss you all, loving you as Christ Jesus loves you. My prayer is that your love for each other may increase more and more and never stop improving your knowledge and deepening your perception so that you can always recognise what is best. This will help you to become pure and blameless and prepare you for the day of Christ when you will reach the perfect goodness which Jesus Christ produces in us for the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. In the fifteenth year of Tiberius Caesar's reign, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod, Tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip, Tetrarch of the Lord, Lysanias, Tetrarch of Abilene, during the pontificate of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. John went through the whole Jordan district, proclaiming the As it is in the book of the sayings of the prophet Isaiah, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare a way for the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley will be filled in, every mountain and hill will be made broad, widening ways will be straightened, and rough the roads will be smooth. And the whole human family shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Some years I went each Easter to Lourdes with HCPT. Uh, many of you will know it's a charity that takes children and young adults 
with various forms of disability and with social need to Lourdes for a pilgrimage holiday each year. Each year there is a theme for the pilgrimage as a whole. And on the Thursday, all the so our group from York, which will be 20 or 30, from all around the England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland, and now increasingly from around the world, Serbia, Malta, United States are sending groups. And with the chaplain's pack on this one particular year, we received a brown envelope with a mirror in it, a square mirror, that big. I had no idea what it was for, but anyway, I thought somebody must know what they're doing. The theme of the, theme of the pilgrimage was a quotation from St. Paul. You are God's works of art, Paul tells his audience. You are God's work of art. So during the Mass then, we were told before Mass what we were to do. At the end of the homily, which was mercifully brief, because <laughs> I was listening, not speaking, I suppose, um, we were asked to go to each member of our group and hold up the mirror so they could see their face and to say the words, you are God's work of art. Some of the adults, the adult helpers, began to, to cry when I said those words. That you are God's work of art. And I suspect if I were to come now down among you and hold up a mirror to you, many would find it difficult to hear those words said about themselves. We'd have no difficulty, I think, seeing it said of other people in the congregation. But to hear it said about me is a different thing. And one of the members of my group um, who had, had tears in his eyes, when I'd gone round the whole group, came and he took the mirror off me and held it up to me. You are God's work of art. I'd like to make my own those words of Paul to the church in Philippi, the Philippians. Every time I pray for you all, part of the priest's job is to pray for his people, to pray for his parish, to pray for his parishioners. When I pray for you, I pray with joy. Because part of the privilege of being where I am is I get to see all the many, many, many ways in which you put the gospel into practice. And how you are God's work of art. And a work of art isn't done in five minutes. God love us. He's taken two and a half years to get a bit of concrete repaired and some new lights put in. And that would hardly be in the Louvre or the Tate Gallery in a hundred years' time. But it might be. <laughs> Unlikely, though. But a work of art is made slowly and with care and with infinite love. You can see a true work of art 
is made always with love. Michelangelo used to say that he didn't so much carve as to uncover what was already present in the stone. And a sculptor will start with big blows, heavy blows, a big hammer and a big chisel, and he will smash off the big chunks. And then gradually, tinier and tinier blows until the true shape is revealed. You might think, those of you who have been to Rome, of the Pietà in St. Peter's, Mary holding the dead child. The only work that he signed, signed across the band across Mary's breast. Or to Florence and to see Davide standing there in all his splendid human glory. So gradually, smaller and smaller and smaller blows, and then sandpaper, and then finer sandpaper, and finer sandpaper still. And then in the end, oil, oil to bring out the beauty. And that's how God is with us, at work in us, in ways that we don't see in ways that we don't see, but which take us slowly as we live life from one place to another and to a different way of seeing than when we had all the certainties of someone perhaps as they grow into adulthood to the understanding of just how many grey areas there are in life and black and white answers don't solve anything at all. And how gradually we begin to see God's wisdom at work and present in all around us and in our world. And that's a process of repentance, which is what John calls us to. Repentance really is a very poor translation because we think when we repent, we walk around beating our breasts and saying, what terrible people we are. So that when someone holds up the mirror and says, you're God's work of art, we draw back. How can that be true of me? What a terrible person I am. But that isn't what God sees. The word in Greek that's translated here for repentance is metanoiete. And metanoia is made up of two Greek words that we had, synod, sulhodos. It is metanosis. It is no change your mindsets John is saying to us see differently and see the salvation of God present already at work among us and our advent journey is that journey of changing our mindsets letting go of the certainties probably most often most necessary our certainties about God I remember talking to a, a priest, a friend of mine, who was dying. He was dying young. He didn't make 50. Uh, God love him. I miss him still. And I asked him, because we were friends, and I felt able to ask that question, how does it feel to be where you are? What's it like to be so close to death? And I remember his words still. I don't know, really, he said. I don't know what to expect. But all I know is, and I know this deep down, that there is love. And I'm going to love. And therein is the whole of the prophets and the law also. God guide us on our Advent journeys. And I do pray for you with joy. And in so many ways, I see how you are God's works of art. Works in progress, like me, but works of art nonetheless. Next time you pray, 
Maybe just do so with that thought in mind to ask God to help you to see just how beautiful you are. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That was a touch long, I'm sorry. Let's just take a moment for prayer. Pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. Pray for his presence in, in Greece now, having been to Cyprus, for the meetings, praying and in conversation with the leaders of the Orthodox churches in Greece. Pray that God will bring good fruit out of those encounters. Lord, in your mercy, for our parish community that we may be able to realize just how deeply we are loved by God and set free by that love to share that with others. Lord, in your mercy. For those in civil authority that they may have the wisdom to see what needs to be done and the courage to do it. We pray especially for those making decisions around how we're going to care or indeed if we are going to care for those who are refugees. Especially for our Home Secretary who is a child of refugees herself. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are sick, the sick members of our parish family, those in hospital, those in rehab centers, those at home. Pray for their families. And for all those who are sick at home and in nursing homes. Lord, in your mercy. And remembering Kay today, we pray for all who have died. The deceased members of our parish family. We pray for Mary Carolyn, whose funeral will take place on Thursday here. Lord, in your mercy. And for the prayers that we brought with us today. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, hear us in all the prayers we make with faith through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Sisters, brothers, let's pray together that this, your sacrifice and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Savior. He assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made clear, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Terence Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brother, your servant Kay, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, who pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always, in an appropriate manner. Share a sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away our sins and the sins of all the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jerusalem, arise, stand on the heights, and behold the joy which comes to you from God. We make our act of spiritual communion with those who are at home and who can be here with us at the moment. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you in Holy Communion, please come anew into my heart. I unite myself wholly to you. Never let me be parted from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glad to sit down just for a minute. As one or two notices, our diocesan um, service to the LGBTQ plus community uh, meets again next Sunday at three o'clock at the Bar Convent Chapel, all are, are welcome. Just a clarification on the appeal for, um, the toy appeal for the Salvation Army. When they ask for gifts to be unwrapped, it means unwrapped in terms of gift wrapping. Because if everything is wrapped in nice shiny paper, then they can't see what's inside. And so, um, you know, an 18-year-old boy getting Barbie for Christmas is probably not what he would he would most most want. Uh, so, if you aren't able to help, then please simply bring them uh, to mass with you next Sunday. Uh, and they're asking for for new new presents. But as uh, Major Duncanson says, you know, a deodorant gift set uh, or a gift voucher would never go never go amiss. Um, and that, I think, is it, except for the Christmas Masses. The PPC met last Monday in person for the first time in a long time. Discussed where we're up to, discussed um, the Omicron virus version and, and, and all the rest of the things. And decided that unless there is a change in guidelines, either from the government or from the diocese, that we will go ahead with our Christmas Eve Nativity Mass with the children and that will be 6 o'clock on Christmas Eve and there will be a more solemn, for want of a better word, Christmas Mass at 10 o'clock on Christmas Day. We are asking that those who wish to come, especially to the Nativity Mass, please do a lateral flow test before you come. And if it's positive, then please don't. And if you're poorly in any way, we now know that things like feeling tired and upset tummy can also be precursors of COVID. So if you're poorly in any way, please don't come. But we felt very much that we should go ahead, especially because the children have missed out on so much uh, over the last while. And we've missed out on not having the children with us so much over the last while. So that's the 6 o'clock Mass and then the 10 o'clock on Christmas morning. And uh, please God, uh, we'll be able to go, to go ahead with that. Sadly, the Mass for the Sacrament of the Sick, when um, Kath from the SVP asked around, uh, the people that we would have in the main been the housebound didn't want to come. It was too soon yet. And the helpers who normally help also didn't want to come. So I know that others did want to and I'm sorry for that and if anybody wishes to have the sacrament of the sick before before Christmas just just get hold of me get in touch um, you don't have to be at death's door you don't have to be in hospital um, as we get older all of us uh, can use that help and when I get the chance to be anointed I make sure that I I take it and look what a fine physical specimen I am so that should that should give you give you hope Thank you again. If you stand, we'll conclude the Mass. Before we conclude the Mass, Father Tony, uh, there was one bidding prayer missed ah, sorry. Okay. this morning. Oh. And if you look around you, you will understand what my thoughts are, and that it is to express our gratitude, not only to God for his good work in giving us the church that we have, but the fortitude, the health, the willingness of our parish priest to work tirelessly 
and occasionally we see him not so tireless, and to bear in mind his good health and well-being after such an enormous amount of work in getting the church to where it is today. So please remember Father Tony in your prayers and also to say thank you to God for this wonderful place that we have to come to. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Thank you, John. Of course, I did it all. <laughs> Thank you, that's much appreciated. Thank you. As it's part of my job to pray for you, don't forget it's also part of your job to pray for pray for me so I'm grateful for that now where were we up to <laughs> we said the prayer I've done the notice the Lord 